Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, thank you very much, Representative Blackwell, for inviting me to come today. I really appreciate the genuine interest on behalf of the General Assembly to ensure that our teachers are paid well and that they are valued by our society and by North Carolinians. When the first state superintendent, Calvin Wiley, presented his report to the General Assembly in the mid-1800s, he indicated that teaching was an excellent profession for women. And he said it was an excellent profession for women because women could make more in teaching than they could make in manufacturing. He also indicated that it was good for the taxpayers of North Carolina because one did not have to pay women teachers as much as men teachers. Then fast forward to the 1920s. There were two cities, Des Moines, Iowa, and Denver, Colorado, who wanted to deal with inequities that existed during that time. And here were the inequities. High school teachers made more than elementary teachers. Men made more than men, I mean, men made more than women teachers. White teachers made more than black teachers. And so the notion was, what can we have as a system that will remove some of the inequities that one thought was in existence at that time. So Des Moines, Iowa and Denver, Colorado were the first cities to have a pay scale based on education and experience or longevity. And though that system has lasted a very long time in public education. Now, there have been many starts and many stops and many starts and many stops and many starts and many stops for merit systems for teachers. There has been lots of discussion about shouldn't we pay our better teachers more? How do you define who is the better teacher? So the issue is very complex, but I do want to point out that North Carolina has the longest, had the longest running bonus system of any state, and that lasted five to seven years, where teachers received bonuses if they taught in a school that exceeded growth or met growth as measured by end of course tests in math, science, and at that time, social studies. Teacher compensation systems have many complexities. In some cases, it is difficult to measure the long-term impact of teachers. In other words, it's difficult to measure the unmeasurable. And on the other hand, student growth can be measured through testing, and we can determine through a student growth system uh, whether that students are having a year's worth of growth or a year's worth of teaching. But yet, how do you measure growth in subjects such as arts? or physical education or in some other areas. How do you quantify a student being able to develop a beautiful piece of art and have a growth score for that student, for that, te for that student and hence for that teacher? And how do we recruit teachers and keep teachers, especially in schools struggling to increase growth and achievement? It is a complex and complex issue and surely the saying it depends has significant meaning when it comes to teacher compensation and let me give you an example it's one thing to entice a teacher in Wake County to go to another school in Wake County that is struggling to improve student achievement than it is to have to get a teacher to move to an isolated geographic area of North Carolina without access to the amenities that young people and older people and middle-aged people have here in Wake County. But on the other hand, a teacher living in Caswell County may be willing to drive another 15 miles to Burlington Alamance because there's a local su supplement of $3,900 compared to Caswell County's local supplement of $937.
and your materials that you have um, before you uh, do, do have the social, I mean, the local salary supplements for each district, and there's additional information about the turnover rate of teachers. And please know that there's much work to be done to get at the core reasons and being able to have that documented as to why teachers leave any school. But the turnover rating information that you have in your packet is based on a teacher not being at the same school district the following year. So one of our major issues is that we need to continue to get at the core reasons why teachers leave the classroom, why they go to another state, or why they go to a different local school district. But in all the research, regardless of whether you're looking at teachers, whether you're looking at nurses, whether you're looking at physical therapists, it is important to remember that a base salary must be at a level, if you want to be competitive, to be attractive to qualified people. And people take into consideration such factors as working conditions, opportunities for growth or advancement, opportunities to work with others, sense of fairness and about salary, the value that society places on that job, and location. And unfortunately, we have yet to find a perfect way, or even an ideal way, to have a comprehensive system. And any system inherently has some weaknesses and it has some strengths. But today I am going to approach that area by proposing that you consider the wedding cake approach to a total comprehensive system for public education. Now think about a wedding cake. A wedding cake has to have, if you're into wedding cake making, has to have a very solid foundation in order to support additional layers. And with a wedding cake, if you have that solid, solid foundation, then you can build layer on top of layer to have a beautiful wedding cake. So this is what I am proposing. First of all, that the foundation is our salary increases for all teachers. That goes back to the whole notion of having teachers believing that there's a sense of fairness about salary. It has the sense of making sure that a base salary is at the level to attract qualified people. And I would want North Carolina to be extremely bold and to look toward a 10% increase for all of our teachers. And I believe that the General Assembly is on the right track when you have consolidated 30 plus pay grade levels to a smaller, a num smaller number. I do believe that that number needs to be more than what we have, but certainly much less than 30 salary pay scales. The second layer is about local leadership of teachers. And this layer takes into effect the whole notion of working conditions, opportunity for growth and advancement, the opportunity to work with others. And this proposal is that you identify as that label, layer a certain percentage of our teachers who would be designated as teacher leaders. And the decision about the teacher leaders needed in a school would be a local decision. But here are some ideas an instructional coach, a grade level coordinator, a peer evaluator of other teachers, a professional development coordinator, and the list goes on. But in your material, I have given you additional information about some of those areas. And I believe it would be important that you as a body delegate to the State Board of Education what those guardrails would be as to that. And so uh, as the handout you have shows, you could start at one level and continue to advance. For example, if you would look at the back of your handout that you have, you will see that if you paid, if you did an allotment to a local school district of $10,000 for 
um, for a fifth of the teachers, how much it would cost, $10,000 per teacher for a fourth, um, and all the way up to the third. So that would be one approach to building that layer of the wedding cake. The third layer deals with low-performing schools. As I mentioned earlier, it is one thing to go from one side of Wake County to the other compared to being in Wake County and going to the very northeast of North Carolina. So that's the notion of depends. But one proposal is that we would identify sufficient dollars where we could have teams of teachers to go to a school um, having low performance. And it is difficult to make those projections because we have at least four definitions of what is a low performing school. We have the General Assembly's, your definition of A through F. Uh, we have 580 plus schools with that list. We have a definition from the federal government that says our Title I schools, low performing. And then we have another one with the new legislation that says that we identify 5% of our lowest performing schools. So there are different ways to determine the low performing schools and so consequently it's difficult to uh, calculate that without knowing the actual definition that one would want to use. And then the top of the layer, the cake or the waiting cake, is to have bonuses for schools exceeding growth. And I believe that some of the research that was conducted as a part of our having race to the top uh, will provide uh, some evidence for you about why teachers believe that teaching is a team sport, it's not an individual sport, and why teachers uh, are more in favor of looking at bonuses for schools. There is the other angle, though, that you could give bonuses for schools and if then give bonuses for teachers within those schools that exceeded growth for the, for the teachers. So that's the wedding cake approach. And so what are some of the advantages of moving in this particular direction? Well, number one, it does provide a model for long-term goals, uh, depending on the amount of money that the General Assembly and our taxpayers uh, give us to have available. It allows enough steps to ensure that the plan can move forward. It gives a framework for commitment and it combines state support with local decision making. And while we need to do a lot more research to determine why teachers actually leave the field, this does take into account the complexities of the, the whole issue of teacher compensation. So with that, Representative Blackwell, I'll be glad to answer questions or do whatever you would like for me to do.